So is Prince Charles ready to be king, or is this the beginning, potentially, of the end of the British monarchy? This is the debate raging everywhere at the moment. And joining me now to discuss it, author and journalist Tony Parsons, political activist Kate, Kate Smirthway. Well, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, let me start with you. We just had a story and mm -hmm. put it into perspective. The Queen, one of the all-time great monarchs, indisputably, if you're ranking monarchs, she'd be right up there. To me, number one. But, you know, there's some other compelling candidates. You don't like the concept of the monarchy, right? Yeah, it's not... Well, it's, I, don't, I, I don't dislike that elderly lady. That would be ridiculous. Um, but I, I just think it's 2022, and the time for having a monarchy was a few centuries back. And I think if anything has shown that, it's the recent Caribbean tour, isn't it? I mean, how patronising to have the British royal family wandering around the Caribbean, expecting people to bow and scrape in front of them. And I think brilliant that people all across the Caribbean kicked back and said, hold on a minute, do you not understand the history and what this represents? And I think that the history of what the monarchy represents is no less of an issue in this country where, you know, the working classes, the proletariat have been continuously oppressed by this structure of the class system and the monarchy at the top of it. And I think it's about time that we all move on. And interestingly, you know, here I am, you're asking my opinion about the monarchy. Here's how the monarchy works. We that, you know, we are, we, are the, we are the riffraff, we are the bottom of the pile, we don't get an opinion. If you want an opinion on who should be monarch, then you, like me, want a republic. Oh, you're getting an opinion right now. Tony Parsons... But that's I mean, my point. Do you, a, do you identify as riffraff? <laughs> and B, you, nobody uh -huh. knows the working class mentality of this country better than you do. Yeah, You've written about it for decades. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, there, the, the certainly, way... there are young people. There's yeah. no... Unquestionably, there are young people. A lot of them fueled by Meghan Markle's claims of racism and so on at the palace and so on, who have turned against the idea of a monarchy. Um, I think the working class have always seemed quite keen on uh, the monarchy to me. When I was um, a young punk in 1977, hanging out with the Sex Pistols, it was um, the working class who wanted to give us a good kick in for mm. disrespecting the Queen. Um, I think that the, um, the Queen, with her 70-year reign, has secured the monarchy for the next 100 years or so. I don't think there's any... I don't think anybody alive in this country today will live in a republic. She's secured... She's made the case for the monarchy, and she's an exceptional woman. And circumstances were exceptional. She was so young when she, when she came to the throne. She's mm. lived such a long time. And I think that combination of stamina and substance and I think she's got better and I think she's got better with age since um, she jumped out of a helicopter before the 2012 London, <laughs> London Olympics with Daniel Gray through to the um, the height of the pandemic the 75 year anniversary yeah, of she the was e amazing in the pandemic well, and she, I, the, the and I, would say, I would say Kate to you I mean I know the argument they're not elected people but mm. I look at our elected officials I look at Boris Johnson Keir Starmer squabbling over who may have broken more lockdown rules, who may have betrayed the, the trust of the people more. And you look at the Queen, who for 70 years has held that trust, has kept our respect. Well, I'm not sure that that's always been the case. There have definitely been times when I've been like, really, she's meeting the leaders of Saudi Arabia? Has she looked at the Amnesty International reports on their human rights record? There are definitely times when I've been like, actually, I'm not totally sure that she's doing the right thing or shaking hands with the right people. But the fact that there are elected officials who are terrible, and I'm in no disagreement with you that there's no shortage of those, um, I don't think that the answer is, well, let's just decide that democracy doesn't work and throw it out. It's very ironic, actually, to have seen Prince Charles today Day, saying this government, Her Majesty's government, will uphold democracy around the world, and you're like, but you're the embodiment of us not having. Yeah, democracy. but in a way, in a way, Tony Parsons, they, they, they're figureheads above our democratic system. Well, they're not elected, but they do pay for themselves. And I always make this argument to American friends who say, well, they must cost a fortune. Well, they do, but they also get it back from the huge tourism they attract, not least from the United and, States. You know, well, the hang queen, on, let's the, let Tony the, the, queen, the Queen has been there for 14 prime ministers, seen them come and seen seen them go, and even. Even prime ministers that won three general elections, like Thatcher or Blair, they seem like footnotes in that 70-year reign. And I think the fact that she's... she, I mean, I, I understand what Kate's saying about shaking the hands with um, Saudi Arabians, but the, one of the great things about her is she's got this genius for having the poker face that she hasn't picked and choose to war you know we don't fancy your human rights record she's met the lot she's met all Jimmy of them Savile, she's, uh, she's, yeah the well, lot no, she's, like, I, I, I think most most british people would would prefer a monarch 
that can meet any head of state in you know, any dictator rather than rather really than rather than pick and choose about you know because then that's where you you get Meghan Ma Markle and Harry oh, oh, we you know we can't meet Trump we won't and it just seems mm. pathetic it doesn't seem noble it doesn't seem virtuous oh, to me it refusing seems, to meet Trump pathetic. seems pretty noble well, well, like, it does but you see the moment you start picking and choosing which difficult world leaders you're not going to meet then I mean, you're so making much a of the world is not free. Well, so you'd have Putin on this show would you Yes, absolutely. Oh, God, it well, would really? be a question. Wow. No you, question. But, like, but, like, but, like, wouldn't you think, hold on a minute, he's committing no, human No, I think, hold on a minute, I'm going to ask you some tough questions. In fact... But don't you think that, fact, there's a, that there's something more significant we should do than well, ask him a actually, question with a pen? Don't you think we should... Actually, actually, right now, I'm about to interview official spokesman for the Taliban. Mm, Are you saying yes. I shouldn't be doing that? Well, I'm not sure that... I mean, sure, if you're going to absolutely nail them, but if you're going to give them a space to expound their views and their it? opinions... Yeah, stand back and oh, I'll right. do it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me twice. I please. will do what I always do, which is I will ask the questions I think people want to have answered. Yeah. But I don't see any reason why I wouldn't interview Vladimir Putin or why I wouldn't interview my next guest, which is the official spokesman for the Taliban. Tony, final question. Is this country ready for the Queen passing because it's going to be such an enormous I moment. Don't think, I don't think we're ever going to be ready because I think she's an impossible act to follow and I think that King Charles III and King William IV will never be and could never mean what she means to the people because she goes right, right back to the Second World War. She goes right back to that. I mean, you said last night on this show... Um, you know, there's never been a time when she wasn't on the throne. Mm. I'm ten years older than you, and there's never been a time. You look about she... ten years younger, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's his boxing training. We've got Lennox Lewis on there, and that, it, he'll be keen on your training regime because you you never get any older. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you very much, Tony. Great to see you again. You'll enjoy this next segment, uh, Tony. It's a little uh, moment of dog dog love, which I know you'll love. Uh, talk about heart stopping. This is the moment a woman's beloved pet dog suddenly jumped or maybe fell out of a window and it was captured by a doorbell camera so we can see it. Rachel Green from Kent in the south of England was on her doorstep talking to a tradesman when she suddenly noticed an upstairs window open. She only saw it because the sunlight's reflection against the wall caught her eye. The next thing she knew, her beloved dog was hurtling towards potential death. See what happened. He's got his own stuff to do and he's really all busy for right. <gasps> Oh my God, get back! Tony and I both Arsenal fans. I mean, I like Aaron Rams, our, our keeper, but we could do with Aaron Goal <laughs> against Tottenham on Thursday. Uh, and from a dog that's lucky to be alive to one that's actually saving lives, President Zelensky is awarded a mind-sniffing dog called Patron, a medal for services to Ukraine. The dog has helped find more than 200 devices during the war, has also become something of a national hero and a symbol of canine Ukrainian resistance. Well done, Patron. We're all very proud of you.